I'm building a voxel-based survival slash building game, and for the past year I've been documenting it here on my channel. It started off over a year ago with an idea to build a voxel editor with a living world that was just a fun pet project, but slowly it spiralled into me trying to build an open world survival game, as these projects often do. So far, the focus has mostly been on the building an item system, and this has been for a few iterations at this point and has progressed fairly well, but it's time to start on the key features that will take this from being a sandbox into a survival game. One of the first things I wanted to check off was the game world. Currently when you load a new game, you're greeted with an empty green island. This is made up of voxels and you can change it however you like, but it's pretty boring from a gameplay perspective, so it's time to change that. Little did I know at this point that this was going to bring me to question if what I'm trying to build here, my dream game so to speak, is actually going to work as a game. This is becoming a bit of a recurring theme for me. Uh, something about combining voxels with a top-down view is just surprisingly challenging from a design perspective. Now, the world is already made up of voxels, and these voxels are grouped into chunks. But right now, the code that generates the voxels within these chunks just returns the same basic blocks with no variance, and this results in a pretty boring outcome. For this game, I want to implement a procedurally generated world that has some standardization. For example, the world will always contain set biomes, but the content within these biomes will be procedurally generated. For now, I'm going to just focus on generating procedural terrain within a size constrained area so that I can get the basic algorithms implemented. And then once I have that, I'll focus on expanding it to generate a world rather than just a small island. To implement the procedural generation, the basic plan was to switch out the currently hard coded line that returns a voxel with a function that will return different voxels based on the current position in the world. And this will create us our procedural terrain. For this, I chose to use Perlin Noise. You may have heard of this from other games as it's quite a popular algorithm, but for context, Perlin Noise is a function that when given coordinates will generate a smoothly varying pseudo-random value at a given point in space. Now, using the number generated from calling the Perlin Noise function, we can generate a terrain height value that will move smoothly up and down as the position we're requesting a voxel for changes. We can do whatever we want with that information, which in this case means returning different voxel types depending on the current height. So after a little bit of work, we have our first pass at our procedural terrain. It looks a lot better than it did, but it's still quite basic, and it doesn't look that great. But before I focus on making it better, I first wanted to implement biomes. These biomes will contain their own terrain values that determine how severe the terrain should be, and which block types are native to that biome. For testing purposes, I'm just hard coding the biome to select for now, but in the future I'll change that to select the biome based on the coordinates. Right now I'm using temporary block textures, and I only have so many of them, so I've just created a grass, snow, desert, and sort of rocky biome. The values and styles for all of these are temporary, it's just purely for testing at the moment. Next, I decided to flatten the terrain. I was going back and forth in my head at this point about the idea of not having any hills at all and just keeping it simple. Given the top-down view, this removed quite a lot of complexities, but it also made it quite boring. So I would later pivot back and forth on this. But I didn't want to stop my progress, so I carried on and focused on adding in some extra variance to the terrain. I layered in some additional surface values so that the ground isn't painted perfectly in one colour, and I also added in beaches around areas that touch water. Now at this point, I started on the object layer as I wanted to get trees and other things in the world to help me with visualising how different terrains would look when fully generated. It's a similar concept to the voxels, but instead of generating a terrain height value, we generate a spawn value and then use thresholds for different objects to determine if something should be spawned at a given position. The only issue is that these were all the same type and the same size, so it didn't look that great. So I first updated the biomes to contain collections of objects that can spawn within them. For now, everything has the same chance of spawning, but I'll revisit this in the future when I'm focusing on the gameplay. To add a bit more variance, I also added varying sizes for trees. This is done by scaling the tree mesh or the rock mesh randomly at different positions. To wrap this up, I added support for underwater objects so that I could spawn corals and rocks and other things. For now, I only have a limited number of models that I'm using for things like trees and rocks, so I had to use sort of placeholders for these objects, so I'll come back and replace them in the future. Everything was going great up until now. However, I mentioned at the start that was one thing that made me doubt whether this whole game design was going to work. And this was about where I encountered that issue. It had been lingering over my head for a while at this point and was casting doubt on quite a lot of things. And I just had to go and deal with it. The issue had to do with the overall gameplay when factoring in the procedural voxel terrain. See, 
Because of the top-down view of the world, this makes things quite difficult when you don't have control over the world design. I can't guarantee that there won't be areas of the world that aren't unfriendly to the player's experience and also the player view. And I, I can't move things around in a level editor, I have to just trust that the player is able to navigate these things. And the only thing I can really do to help this is provide the player with useful tools and ways of moving around this, such as hiding the terrain when it blocks the player view and also allowing the player to rotate the camera. But there are still some scenarios where this might not work great. Also, I didn't want to create a jump simulator. So if there are too many hills, because of the voxel terrain, hills can look quite dramatic and you can't just walk up them like you would in a normal game. You have to constantly jump. And in the top-down view, this could be quite frustrating because you can't quite judge where the ledges are like you can in first person and I just don't think it would be a very fun experience to just constantly be hitting the spacebar. So I had to come up with a solution for this as this was pretty critical to the overall design and ultimately the potential success of this game. After a lot of back and forth, I decided to implement a version of the terrain generation that would include the hills and the valleys, but would also include a great deal of flatland. And the challenge was to get the ratio of flatland to mountainous terrain just right, and also still generate things like riverbeds and ocean floors for the water. I hope that by keeping hills in the game, but also generating a lot of flat terrain, it would sort of be a good balance between the, the, the best of both. And also I thought with the hills, I could also add a feature such as an auto jump. So if you approach a, a ledge that is only one voxel higher than where you are, it would automatically carry you up it so that you didn't have to keep spamming the space bar when you were walking up mountains. But I'm still thinking about that one. Initially, implementing this solution was a little bit challenging because I wanted to keep the sort of severity of the terrain, the, the, the varying heights, but I also wanted to limit them. So doing that with Perlin noise without kind of affecting the overall view is difficult because the slightest change to one of the values can completely change how your terrain looks and often in undesirable ways. So to get this balance took some time and ultimately it was a combination of using different height thresholds to control how I render the world in different ways. The nice thing about this is that by changing the way I was generating the terrain and adding in the different height thresholds, I could also do different things at different heights, such as rendering snow on the top of mountains, or generating a sort of second layer where the player can build upon. I can play around with this quite a lot, but for now I think this will serve as a good base. Next, I needed to focus on getting the decoration layer implemented, as it was quite important for me to be able to see how the game was going to look and perform with all of these procedural elements in. So, I wanted to keep it simple. There's lots of ways you can add things like grass and flowers and other decorations, but again, I, I didn't want to spend too much time at this point on making it look nice. I just wanted to get something in that would give me some kind of indicator as to, to how it was going to look and run. So I opted for a simple sprite based approach where I just drew up some simple grass sprites in Photoshop and then added them in as prefabs. And the nice thing about this is because of the fixed isometric angles, I can layer two sprites on top of each other. And then depending on which angle you view it from, you're always going to see the sprite from the, the, the correct angle and you're always going to get the full effect. So actually I can create quite nice sort of 3D looking sprites. I haven't necessarily done that in this example. Uh, but I'll come back to it in the future and make it look a lot better than it is. I can also add some shaders to these to, to add the wind effect, but I don't want to focus too much on making it look pretty at this point. It's just about getting it in and getting it working from a, a technical point of view. At this point, I was fairly happy with the progress, uh, but then I hit a pretty major issue again, and that had to do with the top-down view and the way that we were hiding the terrain. See, it worked great for buildings and hollow structures, but with solid structures, there was a long-standing bug where it wouldn't render the terrain textures correctly. And until now, I've been putting this off because it wasn't as important, but now we have things like mountains that aren't hollow. When we're hiding the tops of these to show the player, you get this horrible view through the world. So I needed to fix it. I had to calculate the textures across chunks, which added quite a lot of complexity in terms of when to redraw certain chunks. So this took a little bit of time to get working and I had to be careful not to impact performance too much, but I want to come back and re-optimize the whole chunk reloading code in the future anyway. So I'm not too worried about that for now. Now I need to come back and focus on how the whole thing is going to look. The decorations and the objects 
and also the textures are all temporary at the moment and you may have noticed that the textures were changing quite a bit throughout and that was because I was experimenting with different temporary textures and normal mapping just to try and get a bit of an idea of how it could look but again I didn't want to spend too much time on that yet. I also need to come back and focus a bit on the optimization which is one of the next things I'm going to do but at this point it's been a while since the last devlog so it's time for me to draw a line in the sand and sort of call this iteration to an end and start on the next. Thanks for watching and as always I sincerely appreciate any feedback and if you want to follow along on this journey through the ups and the downs please go ahead and subscribe as it helps the channel and you know all that good stuff I'm supposed to say here but just thanks for watching I appreciate the support bye for now